part. Come on. Well, Come on. 15 to 20. Pam, you want to do this with me? Or no, me? no, Jermaine. Thank you, Jermaine. We're good. We're ready to start with Kofi. I know you guys are lined up. Let's take your questions. Hey, Kofi. Uh, how has Coach Antigua helped you be a more complete player this year, especially uh, in your rise to uh, be as dominant as you have? So, Coach, he's a, he's a man of experience, both on and off the court. And when I say that, I mean, like, he played the game of basketball. He was a great, really good big man back in the day um, for Pittsburgh, the, the Globe Travers, and, you know, he had a really good career. And he also has experience in the field of teaching bigs, you know, helping bigs get better. And he has a, re a lot of really good bigs that he, he's helped in the past, like Carl Anthony Towns, Marcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, you know. And he's just been really great with just, like, making sure that I'm in tune mentally and physically in the game, you know, wh whether it's, like, putting hook shots up, you know, where, where, knowing where I'm at on the court, knowing what to get to, what moves to get to, how to get to my spots. And he's just been really tremendous with helping me doing that. And I know you haven't been playing basketball for that long, but what have you learned from him? What's the most important thing you learned this year from Coach Antigua to better your game? Most important thing I learned from him, just not rushing things, you know, letting things come to me. Um, he's a really patient guy, and he definitely taught me the importance of having patience and making the game come to me instead of rushing and, you know, getting in my head. He taught me how to be calm, you know, like I said, just not getting to my spots. That's the most important thing for a player on, on any level, getting to the spots where, you know, you're comfortable at and where you practice. Thanks, Kofi, appreciate it. Hey, Kofi, um, you committed to Illinois after watching them lose to Ford Atlantic at home. And I think they were four and 11 at the time. Now mm -hmm. you're potentially a number one seed. You've played a big part in that. You're a second team All-American by one outlet. What's it been like to be part of the reason Illinois has turned this thing around? What's that mean to you? It means it means so much to me. Um, that, that was the main reason why I came to the University of Illinois. Like you said, they lost to Florida Atlantic really bad. I'm, I can't say bad team, but not supposed to lose that game. And I watched that game, and it didn't discourage me at all because I see what kind of team this, this team was, how, how, how much talented players they have and how much dedicated players they have. Coaching staff is really good, you know. They're really good coaches, you know, both on and off the court, you know. And I just felt like I needed to come here and make a difference. It's, it's been really good being a part of that difference. And, you know, some guys don't like being pushed and, and prodded to, to be better, but you seem to embrace that. You have great drive to, to improve. Where's that come from for you? It's come from my brother, um, you know. Ever since I was a kid, he's been, he's been that person, you know, that pushes me, that has been there for me. And, you know, he just instilled that in me, like, never give up, always have that. Get better, get better energy. Like he always tells me, be a sponge, you know, and try to soak up as much and as much um knowledge as I possibly can. And that, that's where I get it from. I always try to get better. Um, I take, I take um positive criticism, and you know, I'm just always here. I'm, I'm I always have an ear. Thanks, Kobe. Appreciate it. Okay, have you worked at all with uh, Coach O or anybody else on free throw technique or solidifying uh, your your free throws over the last yeah. couple weeks? I've definitely been working on my, my coaches, um, Coach Gentry, Coach Antigua. And yeah, I've definitely, definitely been putting more time in it. Does it have anything to do with hand positioning or just reps? Not, yeah, just reps, you know. But um, free throws are mental. Um, coach definitely, Coach Underwood definitely like instill that in me, make sure I know that it's all mental. It's just about stepping up, and, stepping up on the line. Even if you miss one, not letting it get to you, you know. I feel like that, I, I let that affect me a lot but when I miss the first one. I just let it get to me and bother me too much. And it's, it's just about mental. It's going up there, look, seeing the rim, you know, and following through with your technique. My only other question, you, you always seem to be kind of fighting with Derek about, you know, whether you have to talk with us or not. But I think all of us who've been doing this for a while would say, you're very good with the media and you're very expressive. So it, is it just a burden to you to come up with responses or are you not just a burden playing? at all. I just, I just like messing with DB. I like seeing, what, I, I, I like seeing his reactions. Uh, he gets so, his reaction is like, really? <laughs> Why not? And like, I just, I just love seeing it. So every time, every time he asks me to come up, I'm just like, I can't today, DB. I got stuff to do, man. I never really have stuff to do. I, I'm always dedicated to come and speak to the media, you know, and give them and tell them what I know. But it's, it's just a reaction for me. Like, I like seeing, I like seeing this reaction. <laughs>
And it, I, get him every, I get him every single time. That was my hunch. Now, nobody's going to be able to see this on the Zoom, but every single person in the frame is cracking up right now because I think we all knew that that was the correct answer. So, all right, thank you. Hey, Kofi, um, you've struck up quite the partnership with Andre Curbelo this season. I mean, how could you not? Um, but how have you seen him really grow and, you know, become such a playmaker for this team? Yeah, he's definitely grown tremendously. Um, Andre's a player like me. He likes, he loves to listen. He listens a lot. You know, he tries to get better each and every day. And even, even at the skills where he's really good at, I still see him. He comes out every day. He comes out with his tennis balls. He comes out with the basketballs, work on his dribbling, his handling. And he's just so dedicated, you know. And it's, it's always great to see a player like that come to the Big Ten. It's the toughest league <clears throat> to play and, you know, have such an impact, you know. And I knew Andre for a while now. I knew him back in high school. And I, I developed a friendship with him since my junior year of high school. And I knew what kind of player he was. I played with him on the on the Nike Hoop Summit, you know, and I played against him in high school. I knew what kind of player he was and what kind of person he was. And people like that always become successful because of his energy and his willingness to learn. So I expected that from him. How do you think he's changed the way this team plays, if he has? How do I think? I think he brings a flair on the offensive end like, like no other. I just think his confidence is through the roof. And when he comes out there, he's just so free. Like, he doesn't let anything bother him. He's so free. And, he's, and the, the way he passes the ball and the way he elevates elevates the team. Like, we had players that did that back, like Ayo, you know, Trent elevates us, but he just does it on a different level as a freshman, you know? Absolutely. And then, you know, for the first time this season, um, Illinois fans, are, a small amount, are going to be able to go to the Big Ten tournament and see you guys play. Um, after such a historical year, um, how do you feel about, you know, people finally getting to see the team? Yeah, I mean, Illinois fans are... I love them, you know, they're, they're really, really, really great. And they support us a lot, you know, through the back, hard times and the good times. And it's just great to know that they could come to the games and witness what they've been missing, you know, witness this great change that we've made in this program and, you know, come out there and see, see, see us go to war, you know? Thanks. Hey, Kofi, making first team all Big Ten is an accomplishment in itself, but it's pretty rare for two teammates to be first team all Big Ten. So what does that mean to you that you were able to do it with Ayo? It means a lot, you know, it means a lot. And not only to me, it means a lot about, about what kind of player Ayo is, you know, to be an All-American and to be able to elevate players like that, you know, playing with playing with a player that's just as good as you are, you know, that's just on that level. And it's good. It's always good to see, like, like our team, I feel like our team is a team where everybody is productive, you know, nobody ball hogs, nobody... Like we might take bad shots, but that's just the game of basketball. I feel like everybody, we try to elevate each other and we try to get each other better each and every day, regardless of our position on the team. And I think that to see that on one team, it's, it's really incredible. Like, I, 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 you really see it in, in any, in any, on any level, you know, and it's just a great, great accomplishment. And then all the other guys said they've packed for Indianapolis for a month. Uh, what kind of things have you brought? Did you bring anything like maybe special that, or that might, something that might stick out uh, from the others? Well, not really. It's about my about my uh, my switch, my Nintendo switch. <laughs> That's all that I, I say. Like that stuck out. Everything else is just like business, you know. Like going there, going to win. That's this mentality. Thanks, Kofi. Hey, Kofi, you guys are planning on being over there for a month, and the way that this is set up, I mean, you're pretty isolated in, in that month. Well, what do you guys do? I mean, do you have a certain game like how do you pass time between practices and games when you're in the hotel room and you know, can't really go sightseeing what's the key there like i said we're, we're a really close team and we, we, we all consider each other as brothers and we spend a lot of time with each other whether it's you know playing play, playing on the phone playing games on the phone like group games you know whether it's coming together and playing on the nintendo or xbox and i feel like we just we socialize a lot together we watch movies together you know we hang out a lot together and, and that, that's it man like so like, like I said earlier in the year, I said, most people will get bored of seeing the same faces over and over again, not this team. We, we, we take pride in seeing each other, each other. We love seeing each other. We love being around each other. And that's all we do when, when we're not on the court. We just bond, we, we be together joking a lot, you know, watching movies, playing video games, whatever it is. Outside of obviously winning, what do you hope like on a personal level to take out of, I mean, this is a really unique experience so long in one spot. Is there anything you want to take out of this? Yeah, that word you said, it's not experience. Um, you know, I, I didn't have the chance to do it last year. You know, we worked hard last year. We got the opportunity to, to, 
to to become, to be you know a top seed and we never got the chance to go and play and so right now I'm lacking experience in that in that field you know playing on that national not national level you know so just about going out there you know playing playing my best you know being the best player I, I could be for my teammates and just getting that experience you know know how it feels to be out there. Thank you, Kofi. Appreciate it. Kofi, we just talked to Io, and he said he was the top 2K player on the on the team in video games. Is that true? Is he is he the champion? One hundred percent. Not even close. No dispute. Nobody wants to play Io on 2K. They, they, they try. <laughs> they try. He's, right. too, he's a stu- strategic. He's too good. He's he's, a, he's on a different level. He might have to go play online. <laughs> uh, my, my question for you is that, you know, there's the clip going around of you playing a little soccer and dribbling the ball and, you know, catching on the back of your neck and such. Um, if if your basketball career doesn't go out, are you going to go back to soccer and, and, and dominate as a seven foot? No, actually, I never really thought of that. Like, my, 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 my love is basketball right now. So I never really thought of what if it doesn't work out. Like, obviously, I think about that on an academic level and on a and, uh, you know, when I get older, but I never really thought about like another sport that I would play after I fell in love with, with basketball. Basketball is everything to me right now. Do I have it right that you played a lot of soccer growing up and then you just basically got too tall? Not not too tall. I just got to the point where my brother was like, yeah, you need to start playing basketball now. And ever since I started playing basketball, I just fell in love with it. So I never really looked back at soccer, but I definitely played a lot of soccer growing up my whole life. And what was your skill? Were you a striker? Were you a defensive guy? Were you a goalie? Everywhere. What were you? I played everywhere, literally everyone on, on the field. Okay, thanks. Hey, Kofi, I just had one more. Uh, just how do you feel like you've improved the most after coming back from, you know, entering the NBA draft? How do you feel like you've improved the most this year? Improved the most? Mm. I've definitely improved the most with like just being more composed. Well, last year as a freshman, I felt like I rushed things because I just didn't know better. And this year coming in, I just I know I know the importance of like like I said, just not just you know being slow, being being precise with what I'm doing, and not just rushing stuff and you know going too fast. So it, it's definitely just like about slowing down, you know, being more mentally advanced to to the game. You know, like last year wasn't as wasn't as like basketball smart coming into my first year. Now I have a lot, a little, a little bit of um experience, and now it's just way easier for me to just go out there, be composed, you know, play within the play within the team, and do what I gotta do. And, and this might seem like a strange question from somebody who's five foot nine, but is it like do you enjoy being as large as you are, like, or is there like is is there like drawbacks to that, or like what, so you enjoy it? why? I enjoy it hundred percent, every single bit of it. I mean, does that feel good on the court? Like, why why do you feel that way? It just feels good, you know. Knowing I go out there every day and like team super team and double team because of my size and just being able to use my body, you know, the way I do. Just being able to be that physical person. Um, that's how I was raised. That's how I grew up playing. My brother used to beat me up. His friends used to beat me up. And just knowing that all that paid off, you know. I, now I just I enjoy it. I welcome it. You know. Thanks for giving me that insight that I would never know. Thanks. Hey, Kofi, uh, some of the other guys mentioned watching other basketball, you know, in your downtime. Is there another big, either at the college or NBA level, that you like to watch? Yeah, I love watching Joel Embiid, the way he dominates the game right now. It's like no other. Uh, I definitely enjoy watching him. love watching Jokic, the way he's just, you know, compo- like slow, composed, and the way he, he affects the game in ways that you never think he could. You know, so I definitely watch those two bigs. You know, like watching Giannis, he's really electric. Yeah, I watch a lot of I watch a lot of basketball in my free time. Most of the bigs in the NBA are really good, so it's not any. I don't have any favorites, you know. Thanks, Kofi. Them. Hey, Kofi, I have a quick follow up to Jeremy's question. Uh, do you ever like go out in public and people not know who you are and just like stare at you because you are seven foot, two hundred eighty five pounds, like yeah. like that? Um, with Kobe going on, I've only I've only been in Champagne, so I haven't really been anywhere else. So. Yeah, I haven't seen it. You know, most people on campus know who I am because of my size and, you know, because they, it's, it's a really basketball-dominated um, town. You know, everybody watches basketball. So most of the time when I go outside, people know who I am and they look at me and they smile and wave, you know. Hey, Kofi, I mean, you kind of touched on it. Like, everything's so distant right now with COVID, especially for you guys. How do you feel? Like, there's a natural buzz around campus because of what you guys are doing. How do you personally 
feel that from other people. Is there a way to do that? I mean, not really. You know, like we're mo we're mostly quarantined. Like you know, with the team, you know, we coach try to emphasize a lot, staying away from people and making sure that we're we we stay together. So I haven't really witnessed it, but I definitely heard people send me Snapchat all the time. You know, telling us how proud they are of me. You know, so they they try to do it through social media, whether it's Instagram, Snapchat, and they definitely make us feel the love and you know understand that they appreciate us. Thanks, Kofi. That's all good. That was an awesome Zoom, Kofi. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kofi. Thank you, Kofi. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>